And so, Heavenly Father, even as now, as we come before you, Father, we ask, Lord, there is our prayer request. There are things on our heart, Lord, that uh, is driving us to you. And so, Father, we lift up these prayer requests. And we ask, oh God, that we have your ear this evening. We ask, oh God, that your attention be with us tonight. Father, we lift up uh, our young people, Lord. We lift up those, Father God, that are coming up in this generation. And Father, so many of them don't even have knowledge of who you are have not lived in homes where you have been lifted up or you have been talked about. And Father, many of them are struggling. I lift up those little ones that Lisa referred to, Father God. Father, who don't have parents who support them and love them and care for them. And just they are being tossed about. Father, these are your babies. These are your creation, created ones. And so, Father, we are asking that you will intervene today, oh God, that you will surround these children, Lord, with people who can give them a word of wisdom, who can direct them to who you are. And I just pray, Father God, that you will use your people, Lord, that's, that is working within that facility because there are believers there who can give a word to these children. So I lift them up before you, Father, and I pray that they be given an opportunity, that they will hear the word of the Lord. I pray, oh God, that you will draw them to you. And Father, I pray for the young men that, Joel referred to, I pray for the young couple, Father God, that Ty talked about. Jesus, I understand why they are seeking. Because we're living in a day, oh God, that's full of troubles. Full of trouble. Every day, Father, we just hear about the struggles and trouble. And so, Father, these young people don't know where to turn. But I thank you for people like Ty. I thank you for people for like Joe. I thank you for people, Lord, for those who are on this line, oh God. David and Phoebe and Caleb and G, I thank you, Lord, that they are willing to speak the word of the Lord to these young people. Father, when they speak the word of the Lord, Holy Spirit, will you move upon their hearts and draw them? Because your word tells it is your spirit. It is your spirit who draws. We are willing, Lord God, to be a mouthpiece. We are willing, Lord God, to share what you have given us. But it's your spirit, oh God, that draws. And so we pray, Lord, in this day and time for revival. Revival of the young people, oh God, and move across. Move across, Lord, not just America, but throughout. Move across, Lord, let there be a sweeping revival. Lord, of young people bowing down their heads and saying, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to have a relationship with the Lord? Oh, Father, it comes from you. But we ask these things, Father. We ask these things, Father, in your name. We want to see people saved. We look at our own families. And Father, we see those in our families, Father, who have not surrendered to you. Oh, God, open their eyes and help them to see of your soon coming. Open their eyes, Lord, and help them to understand that they are lost, that they are lost. Oh, God, 
Draw them to you, Lord, I pray. Draw them, Father God. Jesus, you are the mighty Savior. And we thank you. And we honor you. And we bless you. Even as the book of Psalms 103, I will bless the Lord. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. We will love you, Lord. We will praise you, Lord. We will honor you, Lord. So I thank you for this, Lord. In the precious name of Yeshua, I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. Father, I, I just pray for the youth. Father, you, anyone that's in you, Christ, is no longer an orphan. And so I pray, Father, that you remove the darkness so that they can and give them understanding of who you are. I pray, Father, that all these tricks from the enemy, these schemes of distraction, these schemes and these tricks that, that are so designed to draw us away from you, I pray that they won't work. I pray that um, the gallows that are raised up for for the people that belong to you, I pray that the enemy will hang on those gallows. I pray, Father, that as the youth, not just the youth, um, middle aged and and elder and elderly, that we won't have hearts of stone that you give us hearts of flesh, hearts that can be molded, hearts that are turned to you in Yahusha HaMashiach's name. I pray, Father, that the enemy's tactics, all of them will be exposed and that all, all the traps we will be able to see and that we, that you give us a heart that will long for you. And if they've never heard, I pray that you send people, Father, let it be us but send people who will not be afraid to speak the truth, to speak it in love and not be afraid to just love and to do what you're saying in those moments, to, to move the way you're telling us to move in those moments. I pray, Yahuwah, that you that you give us the strength, give us the understanding, give us the wisdom, give us everything we need so we can go out there and get your kids, get your your people who have grown up learning one way. Father, I pray that it's not too late. I pray that as we are turning from our wicked ways and praying that you heal the land, I pray, Father, that you heal these people so that they can join in turn. And I pray, Father, that you relent. You relent from your wrath, be it all possible, um, because our heart is to please you. You said weep with those that weep. You said um, you gave scriptures about having a heart. And, and crying and weeping before the altar. I don't remember the scripture altogether, but I feel the heaviness. And I am, I'm crying out to you with my brothers and sisters, Father. We don't want anyone to perish. We want all people to come and serve you and follow you and grow in you and be in you. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name. So I pray, Father, for all the prayer requests. I pray, Father, that we will be able, the people who are loving you and serving you already, to continue in boldness, to continue in hearing what you say and loving your word and following you and following your Shabbats, your feast days, and all the things that we've been learning. I, I pray, Father, that you give us um, uh, 
more and more tactics on how to share, on how to give, on how to do what you said. Give us witty ideas um, in Yahushua HaMashiach's name. And we bless you, Father, because you're the one that gives wisdom. And we're asking for it. You're the one that gives us strength. We're asking for it. You're our hope. And so we trust in you. And we know that these things are going to be answered. We know that you hear us. So we know that you're going to answer our prayer. We know that you're close to us. We're not just in our hearts. But the word that you've spoken, we are standing on it. The promises that you've spoken, we are standing on it. We are not going to live by sight. We are going to live by faith. We're going to live by your word. And so I bless your holy name. I bless your holy name. I say hallelujah. I say you are worthy. I say um, that you are the great, great Yahuwah. And there is no one else like you. You see everything. You are the one that's able to fight our battles. And we have victory in you. And we want the people that we share your word to and your ways to, to have victory in you. So, again, I pray, give us the understanding that we need. Give the lost, the children, the youth, the understanding that they need. Expose the lie of the enemy. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name. Come to me. <clears throat> Matthew 11. 28 through 30, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find the rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So today, Father, we thank you because that you have extended an invitation to us to come out of that bur burdensome yoke. That we don't have to remain in that place because you said that you would give us rest. And so if we take, this scripture says, take my yoke upon you. And so there are many that are weary. There are many that are burdened down. There are many that are weighed down. But I thank you that you extended an invitation to us. That we don't have to, to remain in that place. And then the scripture says, for the spirit of heaviness, put on the garment of praise. And so that's what we know to do. We know that we can praise you because of who you are over that situation. Your king, your Lord, and your savior, your healer, your redeemer, your strength, your joy, your peace, your love over each and every situation we're in need of provision. And I thank you that you're El Roy, you see us each and every one of us, because you don't have respect of person, and you see us and you meet us at our, our need. So we can let go and release and, and then find peace and find rest in you. That's a promise that we have. And so we are grateful, we're honored, we're, we're, we're just so grateful that you have extended your love and your mercy upon us and you give us your word and you give us the truth and you give us your promises that all we have to do is follow after your plan and then we'll have peace about the situation because we know that we've given it to you because you said we can cast our cares on you because you care for us and you also said that you're concerned about the things that we're concerned about and so as we give it to you then we have a we have the the, the peace that passes all understanding because once we've given to you, we've released it. And we know that you're already moving and working on our behalf and behalf of our loved ones. And once we don't know, once we are concerned about that they would just have relationship with you. So you have heard the requests of ones that are mourning, hurting, ones that just need hope. You are the hope. You are the hope of glory. And I honor you, my Lord, my Savior, King, Abba, Father. And I'm so grateful that I can come to you at any time and know that you hear our petition, you hear our request. But not only do you hear, you will respond. 
And so we love you. We honor you. We adore you. We magnify you. We bow in your presence, you holy and righteous King. All glory and honor and praise belongs to you in Yeshua's name. Amen. <laughs> And I don't want to be remiss and not ask for forgiveness. Forgive us of our sins. Anything that we've done, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Search our hearts. Purify us this day. In y'all's name, amen. 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 Glory to Yah, glory to Yah, glory to Yah, glory to the Most High, glory to the Most High. You're worthy to be praised, Father. We bless you. We lift you up. We thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you that we know that you hear our prayers, which are said according to your word. We bless you and we thank you, Father, because you know best. We thank you, Father. Your will be done in heaven, on earth just like it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, everyone, for praying. I need a little bit extra strength, so I appreciate y'all praying. Yes, that is my name. <laughs> That is my name. So, happy birthday. Well, since you brought that up, G, since you brought that up, before I get into the teaching, my son made something for me for my birthday. Aww. I want to show it to y'all. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Hold on. My. Check him out with the animation skills. <laughs> yep. He's, he's learning how to do all this from scratch. Oh, that's awesome. So I told him, make me something real quick. He made me this a few days ago. But then it was my birthday. He surprised me with this on my birthday. <laughs> and then that, I don't know who that guy is. That, that, that guy clearly... <laughs> I'm way more handsome than that. <laughs> but I just appreciate That's the love. Amazing. I appreciate yeah. the love <laughs> from everybody that wished me happy birthday and especially from my children. Can we sing the birthday song? Oh, I was expecting it. I don't, I mean, <laughs> actually, I want three part harmony. And if you can't oh. sing, just please tap your feet. Because I don't want the spirit to be messed up right now. All right. So let's unmute. Uh oh, this is okay. It's going to be good. Go ahead. We're going to unmute. And I want the, the sopranos, all the sopranos. Happy. <laughs> Got it. Sopranos. Happy. And the altos. Lisa, you do the alto part. It's kind of low. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of low, Mom. That's kind of low. You should be doing that. the soprano part higher than that. Okay. Wow. But happy, let me be quiet. Happy. That's the medium. Okay. Happy. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh. There you go, Romy. You got it. You got it. So on the count of three, you get your parts, everybody. One. Happy. 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 <laughs> Try it again. Happy, 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 happy. Now let's go. Happy. Oh. <laughs> One. One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. No, come on. Start at one. Start at one. Will this work? Everybody yes. Singing? Yes, it will it work. It it okay. Take, unmute yourself. Still sleeping dinosaur. <laughs> Okay, try it again, try it again, Lisa. Okay, one more. Shot. Everybody already on three? Yeah. Three. One, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. 
yourself again yeah some of y'all could have <laughs> muted earlier today yeah we need, but, we, need we need choir practice though. man <laughs> boy well i appreciate the good good, good thing is the it's the thought that counts because uh <laughs> well that you know, my my dreams of that was much better than in person, but I really appreciate that you all did it. I didn't think it was gonna happen. So, amen, amen to that. Receive it, receive it. Yes, I receive it. So, so uh, now we can get started. Uh, so last week. We were talking about Yom Teruah, and we're going to continue talking about Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, because I didn't, I didn't get to get to where I wanted to. So we'll, we're going to finish this teaching, and uh, hopefully I can answer some of the questions that we had last week that I didn't get to answer um, just due to time. So now, Yom Teruah. Yom, just for uh, just to go back what we talked about last week, Yom means day, Teruah means alarm or shouting. So this is about the day of shouting. It's, it's the day of, of blowing, blowing the shofars or blowing the trumpets. And ultimately what I want to do today is connect this day to the day of Yah, I want to see this thing that is called the rapture, quote rapture. I say quote rapture because you won't find that word anywhere in the Bible. But that's the term that is used. So we're going to look at that too. We're going to see, is first of all, is it biblical? And if it is biblical, then how should we understand it? Also, we're going to see if we can have any type of understanding as to when it occurs. So we're going to look at that. And then also, I also would like to go through the through uh, just to let you know what day I'm celebrating this day. Um, and it's a little controversial because if you actually do a lot of study into this topic, you'll realize there's a whole lot of different opinions about days on the Hebrew calendar and when it actually starts, when it actually ends. So I'm at least going to give you the day, but if will we actually get to dive deep into the calendar? We'll see. I might even do another Bible study before Wednesday. I should, I should I'm, uh I'm sorry, I'm saying Wednesday. I'm trying to say the Hebrew days because I'm teaching the Hebrew day, Yom Hamishi, before before that day, so that I can give a deeper level of understanding on, on the calendar and just the Hebrew calendar in general, like what the scriptures has to say about it and why it's important. But let's go into Yom Teruah. Uh, we're going to look at a few scriptures. Um, and I really, I really appreciate too the, the prayers because those prayers are going to be right in alignment with what the message is for today, what it is for this season, how we need to be humbling ourselves. We need to be praying. We need to be fasting. We need to be interceding for others so that so that they can come into the knowledge of who their savior is uh before this day is fulfilled 
So actually, before, yeah, before I even read all of this, I don't want to forget. So I'm going to say it right now. I did send out a text message for those of you that are on the list. And if you would like to be on my list, but you're not on my list, then please just put your email in the chat or you can contact me later or something. And that way, when I'm sending things, everybody will get it. But what I said um, a few days ago was that I wanted to start um, a fast. And I actually started this on Shabbat. Um, I just heard the the spirit of Yah, the Ruach, tell me it's time. So I know what that means. That means that I'm not going to be eating that day. And for however many days I need to not be eating. But I also had a feeling like I think everyone needs to be doing this. Um, but I didn't really, I just didn't pay any more attention to that until a few days later when I sent the text because I just woke up and it came to me again. Tell everybody about the fast. So that time I was obedient. Um, so I asked y'all to forgive me for being disobedient because I'm still learning his voice. I don't always get it right. But this this uh, fast really, I, just, I don't think I put it all in the message. Maybe I did, but I want to for us to be purging ourselves. I want us for to be doing introspection on ourselves. We want we want to be cleansed by the blood and by the word and by the the, the, the water of the spirit. We want to be cleansed because we want to prepare ourselves for these appointment these appointed times that we meet with the Most High. We need to be ready. Um, really that we are really truly truly in the last of the last days so it's time for us to it's time for us to forgive it's time for us to not hold any bitterness it's time for us to um be kind even when we don't feel like being kind it's time for us just to be obedient to the spirit when the spirit of yah is telling us leading us in some direction we just need to do it we, we need not to be easily offended, just obe just being obedient. So what my sister was saying, the, the scripture, I was getting excited because the scripture she said um, about take on my yoke. My yoke is easy and my burdens are light. That's what Yahushua told us to do. Uh, we're supposed to be taking off our own weights, taking off our own burdens, taking off the sin that so easily entangles us. Uh, we're supposed to be removing all of that and replacing it with his yoke and with his burden. It is something that has to be carried, but it belongs to him, meaning we follow him. We no longer do what we want to do anymore. We no longer respond to a situation in the way that we think we should respond, the way the world responds. But we should be doing it as he leads and as he directs. And I had a, I had a good example this week when there was something that i wanted to say to someone but i didn't want it to come off harshly but that's just the way i felt like it needed to be said and so i asked the father during this fast i asked him i said well how do you want me to respond to this so how do you want me to handle this situation and you know what he told me exactly how to respond and the message still come across and i don't hurt anyone's feelings so he can and he will he does lead us and direct us and guide us guide us and i want that to be so clear so evident so that's those are the types of the reasons why i wanted to do this fast and my brother pointed out to me today when we were talking caleb as we were looking at uh the calendar that the day bef the day before uh Yom Teruah is actually a fast day. So in Zechariah, in the book of Zechariah, it talks about the, the, uh, the month of the fourth fast, the month of the fifth fast, or fifth, the month, uh, I'm sorry, month, month, the fast of month four, the fast of month five, the fast of month seven, and the fast of month 10. Most people have no idea what those days are. But they go back to helping to, to understanding the calendar. If you don't understand the calendar, then you won't understand 
on what days those fasts occur. And actually the fast is the day right before Yom Teruah. So I think that would be a good time for us to end it. You know, unless, you know, you've already have something else you're going to do, by all means, do whatever the spirit is directing you to do. But uh, that's 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 my goal to uh, end the fast on that day. Uh, let me get the date for you. That will be on the. Yes, the the night of the sixteenth is when I'll be ending it. So just for for those of you that were wondering, so I appreciate all of you that are, that are doing it. But I believe the Most Highest, please. Okay, let's let's now get in our subject. Okay, the day of Yod Hey Vav Hey or Yod Hey Vav Hey, depending on how you want to pronounce it. So this is also known as the time of Jacob's trouble. So remember, this is a day of shouting. It's a day of blowing of the trumpet or blowing the shofar. So Zephaniah 1, 14 through 18, it says the great day of Yahuwah is near. It's the great day of Yah or, or in the King James, the great day of the Lord. So whenever you see the day of the Lord, you, you'll know what this time is talking about. So the great day of Yahuwah is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. That means it's coming fast. Even the voice of the day of Yahuwah, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. The day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. A few things I want to note here. This day is giving you a list. What I like to do when I'm studying is I like to take these things and make it a list. And then I'll take this word. It's a day of wrath. And then I'll do my word search on that phrase. And I'll find every scripture that I can find with that phrase so that I can make sure that I really understand what this day is going to be like. And if I see this day, that day of wrath, and I see this day of Yahuwah or day of Yah or day of the Lord, then I know that that scripture is talking about this day. It's also a day of trouble. So I, I know if I see this day of trouble, then I may be referring to the day of Yah. It's a day of wasteless, desolation, and darkness, a day of darkness. Now, this, this is, is key. This also reminds me of the darkness that was over all the land of Egypt. Remember, when the children of Israel left Egypt, uh, they were going, before they left, there was these 10 plagues. One of the plagues they faced was darkness over the entire land. And it was darkness. Remember, the scripture said it was darkness that could be felt. It was tangible darkness. And what, we, what we're seeing is that this same day that's quickly approaching is going to be the same way. That remember, the darkness was so dark that the people could not see what in their own houses. The candlelight did not work for the Egyptians. But it says, but the Israelites, they had light in their houses, those that were in Goshen. I imagine that this day is going to be similar to that. It is day can mean a, a literal day. It can also mean a, 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 a time. A thousand years can be a day because a thousand years is as a day and a day is as a thousand years to the Lord or to Yah. OK, so so this is a day. So is this just one day? No, I don't think so. I do believe that the that there's going to be one day that starts all of this for sure. But let's keep let's keep reading. It says it's a day or a yom of the trumpet, the shofar and alarm. That's Teruah. So this is why I'm connecting the day of Yah to Yom Teruah, because if we were reading in Hebrew, we would clearly see this. We would say, see, Yom Shofar 
Tarua. Day of the shofar and day of the alarm. And it's a day that's against the fence cities and against the high towers. Hmm. So I don't want to be anywhere where there's a high tower or fence city when this happens, because this day is against that. Remember, we we're talking about should we work for money? We were talking about cities. That's not really Yah's intention. His, his intention was the garden. Cain came in. He started building cities. Ever since then, we've had these kings ruling over us in every single nation. Even in Israel, that wasn't even Yah's intention for Israel. He was to be their king. So this day is against all of that. He's tearing all of that down. All the governments of the nations of the world is all coming down. Because now this is his day. It's the day of Yah. Now is his time to rule. He's going to show who's boss. He's going to show how the world should have been ran from the beginning. Okay. It says, and I will bring distress upon men and they shall walk like blind men. They're going to be blind because they have sinned against Yahuwah and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of Yahuwah's wrath. So sometimes you hear people say that, uh, you know, our silver and the gold is not going to be meaning anything. Well, it will be until this day. On this day, the people are going to be throwing it out into the streets because it's not going to save them. And they realize that. It says, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Okay. So this is the day of Yah, day of Jacob's trouble. Let me show you a few images since since we just read something about fire. I um I was just thinking earlier about the fires going on. So I started to just compile a list of different fires. So everyone, we know about this Maui fire fire has been in the news, but notice the headline. Maui fires now deadliest U.S. fire in over a century as death con toll continues to rise. Okay. Now I got a point for showing all this, so just bear with me for a second. We're going to look at another one. Then uh, Greece. So I looked at this headline in Greece. This is from two weeks ago. Greece is battling largest wildfire ever recorded in Europe. Okay, let's look at another one. I should have had all these already loaded. Let's see. Okay, Canada. 2023 is Canada's worst wildfire season on record. And it's not over yet. Fires have scorched more than 15 million hectares. And for those of you that don't know, a hectare is larger than an acre. 15 million. That's a lot of land. Look at that. That's terrifying. It looks like hell. And I don't know what hell looks like, but I'd imagine it's something like that or worse. Let's keep going. Um, here's another largest wildfire. This is from one week ago. Largest wildfire in Louisiana history, they say, was caused by arson. Who knows? Who cares? It's the largest fire ever in Louisiana is what I want to point out. Nobody, I mean, you, you're struggling with the fire. Everything's getting burned up. It's... I guess I would care if somebody started it, but that's not the point. That's not the point. Okay, so those are just some of the fires. And why I brought that up 
is because we were just looking at Zephaniah and talking about things burning and being scorched. But there's more than just fires. This is just from a couple of days ago. This Libyan flood has killed at this point, which was at this point, they say five, five thousand. And it's kind of terrible. Some of the stories I'm reading about this. So, I mean, look, that looks like an earthquake quake went off, but that was from the flood. And and they're saying that they are expecting that these numbers may triple. And they really don't they'll never be able to know because so many people were washed out to the sea. Um, and let me show you one more thing. All of these things have happened within the past couple of weeks. Um, and then the lastly, maybe you've seen this Morocco earthquake that just occurred. 2,900 dead and still counting. Uh, this this happened a few days ago, last week. So the pictures from here, pretty uh, bad as well. Um, some, some of these things are uh, just kind of hard to imagine having to go through this, but why I'm bringing all of this up is because what we read about here hasn't happened yet. This is a time where the, the whole land is going to be devoured by fire, the fire of his jealousy. So the world has not experienced the fire of his jealousy yet. And it's already this bad. This is why we want to know about the day of Yah. This is why we want to know about Yom Teruah and be rehearsing this, this, this day, the convocation, the dress rehearsal. It's something to take seriously. It's, it's the most important thing that you could do is be obedient to the Most High and what he tells you to do because... He's trying to save us from this day. He's trying to save us from this day, from his wrath. Because this is the day, as we read, it's the day of wrath. Okay, I'll come back to this in a minute. But I also want you to know what this day, another name for this day. It's also Yom Teruah, it's also Yom Hakesh, the hidden day. So Zephaniah 2, 1 through 3. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. He's talking about Israel, because Israel is the undesirable nation. Wherever they go, they're undesired. They're the lowest wherever they're at. Helps you know who they are. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of Yahuwah come upon you, before the day of Yahuwah's anger come upon you, that's, this is why we are to be gathering ourselves. Zephaniah is saying, this is pro prophecy right here. Get together. Have the convocation. Meet together. O oh, you nation that treats you as the lowest, get together. And do it before his anger really comes. You're supposed to be practicing it. But get together. Let's gather. He says, seek Yahuwah, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. This is part, partly also why we, we need to be fasting as well. This is, we want to seek righteousness, seek meekness. We're doing this, we want to draw closer to the most high. We want to abandon, we want to crucify our flesh so that we can live according to the spirit. So all you meek, all you that are humble, it may be, it's possible that you are going to be hid in the day of Yahuwah's anger. 
wow so what's the instruction here this is this is the this is a warning for us gather together don't forsake yourselves gather together before the decree brings forth before the anger comes the fierce anger the wrath comes upon you seek yahuwah what's that mean seek means to go after it means to research it means to study so seek you seek after him find out what his likes and dislikes are because you got to do all these things and if you do that you may be hid in that day psalm 27 5 for in the time of trouble remember this is a day of trouble yom teruah in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle the place where he's living that's the, his tabernacle where he resides he's going to hide me he shall set me upon a rock beautiful in the time of trouble see sometimes we we uh take these psalms and we just generally apply them and they can be generally applied but they're also at times very specific as well they have double meanings or triple meanings at times there's levels and layers so in the time of trouble there's actually going to be a, a time of trouble remember a day is a literal day it also means a time a season it can be even a thousand years so in a time of trouble he's going to hide me he's going to set me high upon a rock revelation 3 10 because thou hast kept the word of my patience that means you have endured I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth so there is a hour coming there's an hour coming which those that dwell on the earth are going to be tried now I, I don't necessarily believe that this is on the day of Yah but I believe it's right before the day of Yah the time that the scriptures talk is about where it says that there there is a time of great tribulation that's what i really think this is talking about but either way it's you see the same theme there is a assembly there is a group that he is going to keep during this hour he's going to keep them from this hour of trial or temptation which is why i want to now serve him one thing i I've, I've been learning during this during these past few days is that i need to improve upon a lot of different things and he's been changing my heart it's it's been great because the the the, the things that i normally would would do or think or say he's he's changing it i want i want to endure now I want to endure everything I can right now so that I can be kept from this time. I want to be one of these people that are hit, hidden. Yom HaKesh. Lastly, this is the day of the awakening blast. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. And this is kind of what we're going to focus on. We can focus on all these topics and there's more on Yom Teruah. They all can have their own separate sessions. But this is what we're going to focus on today. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised and corruptible, and we shall be changed. So we're going to look at this, but I want you to notice, you see this word Trump. This was written in Greek. This, I think originally it probably was written in Hebrew, but the manuscripts we have right now are in Greek. But if it was written in Hebrew, this would be at the last uh, shofar. 
So the shofar shall sound. So, and then what happens? And the dead shall be raised. There's going to be a shofar. It's going to be a trump. And the shofar is going to raise up some people. Uh, we're going to look in, at this in detail, but let's read this verse too. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. For Yahuwah himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. That's Teruah in Hebrew. With the voice of the archangel and with the shofar, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahuwah in the air. And so shall we ever be with Yahuwah. So this is why I love looking at these things in Hebrew, because when you look at the Hebrew and then you look at the English, you can connect these Brit Hadashah or New Testament passages with the Old Testament passages that are talking about the same event. There's more written about this day than any other event in the scriptures. It should show that should show you and prove to you how important it is. This day is talked about way more than the crucifixion on the cross. This day is talked more about than faith. It's talked more about than so many other different topics. Because it's the most important. And I'm not going to say it's the most important day, but it is very important. It might be the most important. So let's, what we're going to do now is break this down. Because these are the two scriptures that people usually use as the rapture scriptures. So let's look at this. Normally, uh, I would beat myself up because I didn't have time to put all this in slides or make it look pretty, but it's my birthday. So I'm not going to beat myself up today. So y'all, y'all just going to get my notes. So day of Yah, this is, this is what we're talking about. When is the rapture? So first thing I did is I just went to the encyclopedia just to get a basic definition for us. It says the rapture in Christianity, the eschatological belief. Uh, that both living and dead believers will ascend to heaven to meet Jesus Christ at the second coming. The belief in the rapture emerged from the anticipation that Jesus will return to redeem all members of the church. The term rapture, however, appears nowhere in the New Testament. In his first letter to the Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul wrote that the Lord will come down from heaven and that a trumpet call will precede, precede the rise of the dead in Christ. Thereafter, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up. So in Latin, rapio, the standard translation of Paul's original Koine Greek, together, it says, together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. So what it's saying right here is the word for caught up, that's the Latin word rapio which is where the English word rapture comes from. So, so rapture is nowhere in the Bible, but rapio is in the Bible, depending on what translation you're reading. If you're reading the Latin Vulgate, which is the translation which our English translations are translated from right before the King James, that all comes you know, from the Latin version of the scriptures. So some will say, yeah, rapture's not there, but repeal is, and it means it essentially means the same thing. So anyway, I just wanted you to know, know that. It says the synoptical gospels mention Jesus' return to earth from heaven. So I got this from Britannica. So I think we all kind of have a, a basic understanding of this word. Now we're going to look at these, these, these passages that I looked at earlier. First Thessalonians. But this time, we're going to keep reading. Because I stopped where most people stop at verse 17. And we're going to see after we're done with this, if we can piece all this together. Okay, so verse, this says verse 6. This should be verse 16. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. For... For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of 
Elohim and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay, so the first thing I notice right here, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So this event, if you want to call it the rapture or what or whatever you want to call it, what what happens first is the trumpet call, then the dead rise. This is the key ingredient that helped me figure out when all of this is going to happen. Let me keep reading, though. Then we which are alive and remain, so those that are the remnant, those that are left over, the, when you look at alive and remain, this word, it means those that have survived because some bad things are, have happened whether it's a war, whether it's natural disasters. There's going to be people that are left over. So don't think it's going to be a lot of people. It's, it will not be. Those that are alive, <laughs> doesn't sound good when you put it like that. You're still alive. You're still here. They're going to be caught up to meet with them in the clouds, meet, you, meet uh, Yahushua in the air. So we're going to go up. That word actually means th this he, the Greek word here, caught up, it actually means snatch away. So let, let me show you. I want you all to see it. For those that, for those of you that have never looked at this in detail, the Greek word here is harpazo, and it means seize, carry off by force, to snatch out or snatch away forcefully what we were reading earlier this is the latin repeal so it's not kind of like what we see in the pictures what we see in the pictures we see uh people floating up into the clouds like angels everything's it's going to be I'm snatching. I'm grabbing you out. Something's happening. Something. I'm about to do something to this earth that, that the earth has never experienced before. And I got to grab you quick. I. It's going to be so bad. I even got to wake up the dead so that they come to. I don't even want them to be a part of this. All you righteous souls. I'm coming to get you. So he snatches them out of the ground. He snatches those that are still alive and remaining, but the dead come first. That's the key. Because when, when people think of the rapture, they often are thinking about the people that are floating up into the air. Off, and they often say it's to heaven, but the scripture, it, it didn't say heaven. It, it said in the clouds, in the air. And we'll, we'll discuss that later, what that may mean. But he's snatching away. Okay, let's go back. Yes, in the twinkling of an eye. That's right. It's going to be fast. It's going to be fast. So where was I? Okay, in the air. And so shall we ever be with Yahuwah. We're going to be with Yahushua forever when this occurs. Now, let's keep reading. This is the next chapter five. Now. Concerning the times and seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. No need, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord, the day of Yah, this day we've been talking about, will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman 
and they will not escape. Oh, there's a there's a few passages that come to mind. I'm trying to debate whether I should just keep going with my scriptures or whether I should just go there. Let's think. Help me. What should I do? Okay. So it's coming like a thief. Let's look at this. This this thief, I was reading the book of Joel earlier today, my favorite book, and I saw this word, thief. So we're going to, I before E except after C. There we go. So let's read this whole chapter. Not Well, maybe not the whole chapter, but at least to that part. Look at this. First thing Joel says, Yael, Yoel, blow ye the trumpet in Zion, blow the shofar in Zion, sound an alarm, Teruah, in my holy mountain. Look at what Joel's talking about. It sounds like he might be talking about this day we're about to be celebrating. Blow the trumpet, blow the shofar in Zion, and sound an alarm, Teruah, in my holy mountain. Where's the holy mountain, by the way? Okay, it's Mount Zion. I'm not going to wait. It's Mount Zion. This should give you an indication of where we're going. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. Now, now we read Zephaniah a few minutes ago, sounding just like that. A day of darkness, a day of trouble, a day of wrath, a day of the shofar, the trumpet. And blowing of the trumpet. So Joel sounded in the same way. So this event, it, it, looking like it's really tied to this day. We're getting more and more evidence. So day of darkness and gloominess, the day of clouds and the thick darkness. Thick. Remember, we're talking about that thick darkness. By the way, let me show you something real quick. I, I know I keep interrupting, but. The Most High has given us real world examples to look at, and I just can't pass it up. I saw this video not too long ago. There was a huge earthquake in uh, Turkey like several months back. I think it was like four or five months back, if I'm not mistaken. And right before that earthquake happened, I don't know if it was the same day, but really close right before that large earthquake where thousands tens of thousands of people died this is what happened it was in the middle of the day this is not nighttime look how dark it gets all the light is completely for it was about they said from anywhere from five to seven minutes Look, oh, the street lights turned on. You see the the uh, the lights on the on the um, the towers here. They're they're not on because they're not supposed to be on because they were in the day. Look how dark it's just night. I, and am I saying that this is how Yah is going to do it? No, I'm not. I'm just showing you how it can happen. <laughs> it can happen quickly. It can happen very quickly. Yeah, I can bring darkness. I don't know if it's going to be cloud. Well, actually, we just read that. What does it say? It said a day of clouds and of thick darkness. Remember, y'all, when we did that study of the darkness, when we were going through Genesis, that was a good study, y'all. And we know this darkness 
when we studied that same darkness that was there during uh, creation, Genesis 1, not every time you hear of darkness is it just darkness like the nighttime outside. The darkness can get pretty dark. Prophet Miller was telling me today about uh, some angels of darkness he read about in Jubilees, if I'm not mistaken. So this prophet is how I'm saying this might tie into what you were talking about. Yahuwah has angels, messengers that are specifically designed and purpose for this day. There's also other beings on this day that are going to come out, which we're about to read about. That you don't want you 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 don't want no parts of of none of these angels that are coming out on this day. Is reserved for his wrath. They are ministering spirits to do what he tells them to do. So let's keep reading. It says, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to years of many generations. So there's a great people that are strong, that have never existed, nor will they ever after this. These people, I'm not saying they're humans, but it's calling them people. They're going to do some terrible things. Where are they going to come from? I don't know. But if I had my guess, I would say the, the bottomless pit or the abyss, Abaddon, uh, which you read about in Revelation, also called Apollyon, who is uh, the ruler over the bottomless pit. And we read that um, these creatures are going to be coming out of that pit. And they're going to be doing that on this day. He says, they're, they're, so they're great people, strong you ain't never seen nobody like this before. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. So in front of them, there's fire. Behind them, there's fire. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. So that, that's saying like they're going to be able to go somewhere, and the land is going to be beautiful. There's going to be green grass and flowers and trees and mountains, and it's going to be luscious. But it's so it can be like that before them, but behind them after they leave, it's a desolate wilderness. Yay, and nothing shall escape them. I mean, nothing is going to if they if there's a place that they're trying to go, they're gonna get there. You're not there's no stopping them, there's no weapons, nothing like that that's gonna be able to harm them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as a horseman so shall they run they're going to be running like horses they're, they're going to be fast they're going to be striding like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap now some people will say well we don't have to take this literally i'm taking it very literally the more and more i study the more and more i come into understanding the more I, I just have to take these scriptures literally because we've been taught incorrectly. So like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains. See, remember he said they're going to be people. They're going to be strong. They're going to be great. They're going to be like giants. Giants. Okay. And it says, so they're going to, on the tops of mountains shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their, before their face, people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. We're going to see this is a theme. This is a theme that's a recurring theme. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. So these people, these strong, mighty men, they're going to be climbing over walls like men of a war. They're going to be attacking. No one's going to be able to break their ranks. They're solid. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, meaning they're not going to be fighting against each other. You know how sometimes you can be in a battle 
and the enemy gets confused and they begin fighting amongst themselves or whatever that's not going to happen with this group of people they are going to stay in order they're not going to kill each other they're not going to thrust one another everyone's going to walk in his path and when they fall upon the sword they shall not be wounded so you may be you may try to do something to them you may try to attack them you may try to shoot them and kill them but nothing's going to happen they shall run to and fro in the city they shall ro run upon the wall they shall climb upon the houses they shall enter at the window like a thief the thief in the night let's go back to what we read earlier this is why i like to make these things into a list because when i make these things into a list i didn't highlight it but it's right here for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of yah the day of yahuwah yom teruah will come like a thief in the night let me highlight that now that's key So look at Joel making these connections. How many connections have we made? We see the trumpet, we see the, the thief, we see the day of Yah. Let's keep keep reading. The earth shall quake before them. That means they're so big, they're so powerful that when they move, they walk, the earth shakes, earthquakes. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. This is another key thing we have to look at. We've already looked at it, but we know that this is the precursor to the day of Yah. For Yahuwah shall utter his voice before his army. See, this is his army. This is what's scary about this. <laughs> you you read all that and you think, oh, this must be the devil. This is his army. Look at it. Let's read it. Yahuwah shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executed his word. For the day of Yah is great and terrible and who can abide it who can abide it i see you with the police sirens going off that's the alarm this is the alarm this is what we are to be doing right now the book of joel he's telling us sound the alarm blow the trumpet if you read the chapter before this, it might be chapter three, I forget. He's calling the priests to do the same thing we read about in Zephaniah, to gather yourselves, assemble yourselves. We're gonna get to get, we're gonna get there though. Verse 12, therefore also now say if Yahuwah, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with ooh, fasting and with weeping and with mourning. We're supposed to be doing this before the day of Yah. Which I, was really why I really believe that Yah has put, the, put this on all of our hearts. Because I'm not the only one. I know Ty was thinking this. There were some other people that were also planning to fast as well. So I, I believe he put this on our hearts. Because this is what we're supposed to be doing. As you see this day approaching. We're supposed to be weeping, fasting, and mourning. Pray that you be found worthy to escape the things that are, are uh, coming. Revelation. So it says, and rend your heart, not your garments. He says, I don't care about the outward things that you do. He says, I want your hearts. Turn unto Yah, unto your Elohim, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And repent of him of evil this means he will change his mind about the evil he's about to bring on this land he will literally 
turn back his wrath if we do this. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, if he will return and change his mind and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto Yahuwah, your Elohim. He's saying, who knows, he might, he might turn around. You might not get the destruction like you was going to get it because you were repenting, because you were gathering, because you were fasting, because you were praying. Blow the shofar in Zion, Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly or mikra, dress rehearsal, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. They're saying get the old people and get the young people, even the ones that are the babies, get them too. They all need to be gathered together. Let the bridegroom go out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Now, this, this is going to be happening on this day, literally. We're going to be gathered up. We're going to be, we're going to be with him in that holy mountain. 2 verse 1, remember, in my holy mountain. So this is, this is a literal thing that's going to happen one day. But before this happens... We're supposed to be practicing this so that we won't be on the bad side of all of this. He says, let the priest see the reason the reason I, I'm saying this is because, look, it says, let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. The place she's been, the place she is at in the bridegroom, wherever he's at. Let them both go out. Let the priests, the ministers of Yahuwah weep. See, this is going to be a time of weeping. It's yes, yes, maybe, maybe you, you've been uh, raptured or not raptured, but caught up, taken up, or you've, you've received your new body. But what's going to happen on this earth? It's going to be so devastating that this is a time to pray. It's a time to weep. Spare thy people, O Yahuwah. Give not thy heritage a reproach that the heathen or the Gentiles should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their Elohim? This is what we'd be praying right now. Delivery promise. Then Yahuwah will be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yahuwah will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I send you corn, I send you wine, oil, you shall be satisfied. I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I remove far off from you the northern army. The northern army is the army that's going to come to attack the nation of Israel. He says, and, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the East Sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he have done great things. So in the midst, can you imagine all of these things are going on? We got this great army that's that's coming, that's going into people's houses like a thief, literally breaking into people's houses like a thief. And, and you got this northern army coming also. To attack the people of the land you hear about the people that come from the uttermost parts of the earth in ezekiel in ezekiel 39 that's um rosh what i believe which i believe now is russia and china but let's keep reading fear not O land be glad and rejoice for yahuwah does great things do be not afraid ye beasts of the field for the pastures of the wilderness do spring for the tree bear her fruit the fig tree and the vine do yield her strength so after all of these things happen then we're finally going to see the land producing like it's supposed to the earth is going to be producing like it's supposed to this is where you see all of these scriptures talking about he's going to restore what the locust has done he's going to restore the years the locust and what the caterpillar is eating and the locust, the canker worm and the caterpillar, 
you know, I'm not gonna read all of this because I want to get back to my point. But this is a lot. Now you can you can start to see these connections. Also, during this time, what he's gonna do? He's gonna pour out his spirit on all flesh. All your sons, Israel, all of them, they all gonna be prophesying. Your old men, they all gonna be dreaming dreams, seeing visions. He's gonna pour out his spirit. Then he says, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. Then shall the sun be darkened, turning darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahuwah come. So when we see this, this day of darkness, sun turning black, and the moon turning in blood, if you ain't right by then, I really don't know what to tell you. Like, the Bible can't really get more clear. That is your last. I, I would look at that as your last second to get right. <laughs> because I'm not saying it's your last second, but I'm saying it's your last second to get right before the Most High comes and breaks forth with all this wrath. Because he said he, go, notice, he says he's going to do this thing before the day great and terrible day so this is like that last sign this is that last thing it says and it shall come to pass that who as whosoever shall call on the name of yahuwah shall be saved these are the ones that are saved or delivered the ones that call on the name of yah that means you need to know his name call on the name of yah know his name because that is the person that will be des delivered why because in mount zion and in jerusalem shall be deliverance there's going to be a place on the earth where people are taken to there's going to be a place where people are hidden there's going to be a place that's high up in the air above the clouds but it's still on our, but still on earth called Mount Zion. And in this place, there's going to be safety. In this place, there's going to be protection. Just as I, we talked about several months ago, I was given the example of how I finally am starting to understand the scripture, 1 Thessalonians, what? We're going to meet him in the air. We're going to be, and he's going to be in the clouds. I finally got it. I'm like, Okay, whenever I go to the uh, to Mount Rainier or if I go to the Olympic Park, I go to Hurricane Ridge, every time, every time I go to Hurricane Ridge, I will be disappointed because it's always cloudy. It's always rainy like it is in, in, in Washington. And I'm like, man, when you look at the pictures of this place, it's some of the most breathtaking views you'll ever see in your life. And we got this right here in Washington. And I said, it just has to be cloudy today. Just had to be cloudy today. I want to come. I drove three hours to get here, maybe four hours, really, to get here. So anyway, I'm like, I'm not going to let this mess up our trip. We're still going to go all the way to the top. So we drive another hour to get all the way to the top of the mountain. But, but before we get to the top, we're in the clouds. And I'm like, oh, this is we we really high up in the air. But then as our car, we keep going, and then now I can see the top of the clouds. And at the top of the clouds, I'm like, oh, it's raining below. <laughs> but on top, it's like a whole nother world up here. The sun is out. Everything is shiny. It's clear. You know, I was like, I can even see the mountains because the all the mountains that where the beautiful view was at. I can see all those because those are all above the clouds too and we're right up here with them and i i remember i took some people to come visit i mean they were just really in awe like it's really in awe when you go to those places but this is what's going to happen the 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 first verse of joel tells you where israel is to where they're going to be he said, blow the trumpet in Zion. So they're already in Zion. They're on the holy mountain. The last verse, it tells you. 
in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. Deliverance when? During the day of Yah. When all of this stuff is happening. So it behooves us to pay attention to these days. Just because everyone else isn't keeping these days, that ain't going to be my excuse. I'm, I'm going to do what Yah says. So let's look at, let's see what time is it. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this, this much time has gone by. I ain't even really started for real, for real. Okay, let's keep going. So, things I'm noting descended from heaven with a shout to Rua. Like I said, I take I, I like the listing, so that's what I'm doing in my notes. The trump of, of God, the, the shofar is going to be blown before be uh the trump of God is going to happen, and then the dead in Christ are going to rise. Okay, so then we see Yahushua. So Yahushua descends with the, with the with a the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with a shofar. The dead in Yahushua they rise first. So the resurrection must precede the catching away into the air. Resurrection has to happen first. So if we can figure out when the resurrection occurs, that will give us an indication of when the catching away occurs, because it must happen after the resurrection. Let me take a break. Are y'all following? Please. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure is making sense so let's keep going i don't have the slides but at least i color-coded everything so when when is the resurrection we're going to look at isaiah 26 17. like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery and is in pain and crieth out in her pangs just means like birth pains so have we been in thy sight o yahuwah we have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. So one thing I want you to notice, you see a woman with child that's in pain. She's having birth pains. So the woman that's having the birth pains, this sounds just like what Yahusha said, all these are the beginning of the birth pains or sorrows. Remember when he was telling us all the things that happen? He says there's going to be wars and there's going to be rumors of wars and there's going to be pestilences, earthquakes in diverse, quake, diverse places, but the end is not yet. So you see that, but the end is not yet. He called those birth pains. Isaiah is also talking about birth pains. We are in the birth pains right now. This is Jacob's trouble. Israel is in trouble. Birth pains is, is, is difficult. We can't really worship Yah the way we want to worship. We really can't. We can't even truly. Many people are bound because of their jobs. Can't even keep the feast the way they want to keep the feast. It's in their heart to do it, but they know they're going to get fired. I had an experience with that myself. I told my boss, I'm keeping uh, uh, tabernacles, I, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken. And they looked at me like I was crazy. Like, they're like, Joel, when did you? Joel needs to get off of religious, uh, the religious reasons. Like, they would do the, the quotes in the air. And because I wasn't as serious. But then when I found out about sh the Sabbath, I, I switched up everything quick. So they just, they were like, they if i if that had been me from the beginning they probably would have had a, had a different way of treating me but since it was just all new they thought i was just trying to get out of traveling for work because we were traveling like i don't know twice a month every month it was getting ridiculous so they thought that's what i was trying to do but i wasn't i was just trying to keep the sabbath so these types of we're in pains it's not easy this just a small example of Israel's pain 
The bigger pain is like going to the extreme of the Spanish Inquisition. But let's keep reading. So, so the, it says, neither have we had, or neither, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise this is isaiah talking he's saying the dead men are going to live and with my body they're going to arise awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust for thy dew is as the dew of the herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead so isaiah is talking about this resurrection here come my people enter thou into thy chambers didn't we just read that in joel enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself we read that in zephaniah as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed until the wrath be overpassed for behold yah he's coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slang. Yah's going to reveal all these things that these wicked people have done. He's going to reveal. The, the earth ain't going to no longer cover the blood. Remember Cain and Abel. Remember that the blood is crying out. Abel's blood is still crying out to this day for what Cain did to him. If you read the book of Jubilees, I forget if it's Jub Jubilees or Enoch. It, it refers to how the blood, Cain covered his blood with dirt, which is actually what we're supposed to do according to the, to the Torah. When you have blood, you're supposed to cover it with dirt. That blood, though, is, is, is going to reveal itself. How? I do not know, but that's what the scripture says, and I believe it. So let's... Let's examine this. So I color coded this so that I could notice patterns. And I'm so glad I did that because I started noticing a pattern when I did that. The first thing I noticed is the birth pains. That's what we're going through now. Next thing I notice in resurrection is the resurrection. Next thing I notice is the wrath of Yah. This is the order. We saw this before, but when we read it when i list it out like this you can now see it and this is in the old testament so we know that the birth pains jacob's trouble the catching away it cannot happen until the resurrection but the resurrection happens right before the day of wrath because actually is you may, may even say it's the same day as the day of wrath he's snatching away right before he pours out all his wrath. Now, there is a difference between Yah's wrath and what we will know, what we call the time of great tribulation. There is a difference. The time of great tribulation is a time of testing. It's a time of great, great, great testing for the inhabitants of this earth. But it's also a time for the woman, Israel, to flee into the wilderness. But let's look at one more scripture here. Let's look at Matthew 24. And I won't be much longer. But I'm going to skip a few verses because we've read this a million times. But Matthew 24, 8. All these are but the beginning of birth pains. Then he lists all the things we talked about. The wars, the rumors of wars etc those are those are the birth pains those are jacob's trouble all the way up from the time of the destruction of the temple just as yahushua prophesied it would happen all the way up to right now birth pains jacob's trouble it says immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken 
immediately after the tribulation of those days, we get the sign of the sun, the moon, and the stars. This is the sixth seal that's mentioned in the book of Revelation. So, remember, this happens before the day of Yah, according to the book of Joel. Book of Joel says, the sun shall be darkened into darkness and the moon into blood before the great day of Yah. That means the resurrection hasn't happened yet. How do I know the resurrection hasn't happened yet? First Thessalonians. It says, um, it's talking about the resurrection, the dead in Christ rise, then who are re remain but caught up. For you yourselves are aware that the day of Yah will come like a thief in the night. Also, we just read, uh, what was this? Isaiah, you see the birth pangs, then the resurrection. So this sixth seal is a warning to the inhabitants of the earth. You have the birth pains, then immediately after the, tri the, the tribulation, tribulation of those days, sun's going to be dark and moon's not going to give us blood, or, or it's going to look like blood, and the stars are going to fall. Remember, these stars oftentimes are angels in the scripture. So could it be the luminaries that we see? Could be. Could be like shooting falling stars, like asteroids. But also there's angels that are coming. There's messengers. It says, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. So the heavens are going to be shaken. Remember, heaven is also firmament. Firmament is going to be shaken. Those, those, that, that firmament is going to be shaken. And that's going to cause those those uh, entities, what I'll call them, that are in the firmament, those entities that are locked up, chained into darkness, they are going to come on earth. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son and the Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So the 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 coming of the Son of Man is after the, the tribulation of those days. It's after the sun and moon turning black and the moon into blood. It's after all of that. Then it says, then we're going to see the sign of the Son of Man. And then what happens? And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet, shofar, and they will gather his elect, not everybody, the elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other he's going to gather with the angels the elect where are they going to be gathered to mount zion jerusalem the city that's above the clouds So I hope you're seeing these connections, birth pains. I want, I'm just making sure of this because I want y'all to be able to show this to people because no one ever taught this to me like this. I, I got tired of listening to sermons and teachings about the rapture, the day of Yah, when are all these things happening and people saying we can't know. We can't determine it. It's true. No man knows the day or the hour, but we we do know, we should know the season, the appointed time. Remember, Paul said, Paul said, um, you yourselves are fully aware of the day of, uh, no, he said, now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. You know what Paul was saying in Hebrew right here? If he was speaking in Hebrew, he would say he would be saying, "Now concerning the times and the Moadim, the appointed times, 
what we call the feast days now, you have no need to have written anything. Because you know perfectly, you're full aware that the day of Yah is going to come like a thief of night, thief in the night. When people are saying there's peace and security, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains. Remember, the people were their faces were plain pained in blackness. Like they were pregnant. There's a there's another verse that I, I was reading earlier. It talked about it said, look at the men as if they are in labor. Let me see if I can find that. I had that somewhere. Um, uh I want to, that was a good one. And if there's any comments or anything, almost done. So you can uh, share. Okay. Yeah, it's in Joel. We read this earlier. It says, before their face, the people shall be pained. All faces shall, all faces shall gather blackness. So we're seeing the same type of uh, language here. We also, um, there's another passage as well, talking about men as if they were in labor. I, I forget where that reference is, but that's just what it's talking about. He's, it, men are going to look like they're pregnant. It says sudden destruction come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. L literally, the scripture is saying th this is in the Old Testament. I, I don't know exactly what I did with the verse, but it literally says they are going to look as if men are going to look as if they are in labor. I might have it in here, but we probably won't get to it today. Okay. Um is this is that like that verse that talks about men's hearts will fail them? Was that got is that kind of like the, that is that that same time period? It is the same time period, yes. It's the it, it's um it's not the same verse, but it is the same time period. Um I'm I'm gonna look for it real quick because I really want you to see it. They uh see pregnant. Okay, let me look here real quick. Um, I think it's in Jeremiah or Zach. Here it is. It's in Jeremiah. Um, Jeremiah chapter, here it is, Jeremiah 36. So Jeremiah 36 is talking about the same time period. Because look, it says, Behold, the days are coming, save Yahuwah, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judah, says Yahuwah, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And it says, these are the words that Yahuwah spoke concerning Israel and Judah. For thus saith Yahuwah, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. He's talking about the day of Yah. And now, ask now and see whether a man is ever in labor with a child. With child? So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor and all faces turn pale? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble. That's where I get this is from. This is a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come, if it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahuwah of hosts, that I will break his yoke from your neck, and I will burst your bonds. Foreigners shall no more enslave them, but they shall serve Yahuwah their Elohim and David their king, who I will raise up for them. So 
I just wanted you to see that. Um, now, uh, I'll just say this briefly because I don't have time now. It's already 930. But Revelation 11, 14 through 19. If you read this chapter, you're going to notice that at the end. I did the same thing here. The seventh, this is a this passage is about the seventh trumpet, which is the last trumpet. You're going to notice another pa a pattern. During the last trumpet, you see the resurrection occurring for the two witnesses. By the way, we don't have time to talk about that, but I do believe the two witnesses are um, Israel and Judah. It says, after the three days and a half, the spirit of life entered into them and they stood up on their feet. Why? Because their dead bodies were in the street. They died. But they were raised back to life. Uh, Yah said, come hither. And they ascended up in heaven in a cloud. And then once you get to uh, verse 14, it says the second angel sounded. Um, you you read about the read about after this has happened, then what do you read next? Wrath. It's the same pattern. You see the resurrection. You see it happening at the last trumpet. This is the seventh trumpet in the book of Revelation. You see the earthquakes happening. You see the remnant, those that were remaining, they were afraid. And, and then the seventh angel sounds, this the last angel, he sounds the, uh, the, his trumpet. You hear these voices. And then what does he say? The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Yahuwah, because it's the day of Yah now. It's time for his kingdom to now be ruling on the earth. And then, and, and then I'm skipping a lot, but it says, and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come and the time of the dead that they should be judged. So after this resurrection happens, this is the resurrection of the righteous, because there's two, two of them, resurrection of the just and the resurrection of the unjust. This resurrection, which occurs on the day of Yah, it's time for their judgment. So if we're part of that resurrection, which I believe we will be, or the catching away, this is going to be when we get judged. It says, they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name. So this is a, a, this is a wonderful judgment, because... The righteous are being judged, so they're not receiving punishment. They're receiving reward. This is how you know that this is the re resurrection of the righteous because of the type of people that are being rewarded. His servants, the prophets, and the, the, I don't even like that word saints, the, the holy ones, the kadashim, and them that fear his name, small and great. And he did this because he's going to destroy the earth. He's going to destroy them that that destroy the earth. All these people that have been destroying the earth, they are now now their time for destruction. So lastly, I'm sorry, just one more thing I got to show. I just the date that I'm I'm celebrating Yom Teruah, and then we can go. Definitely not gonna have time to talk about this calendar today, but at least I want to tell you. And I don't, you know, I, I, whatever whatever calendar Hebrew calendar you're using, I completely understand. I'm I'm still studying this out myself. But the calendar I'm using, this is from Into Our Truth, uh, and I'll give you a link so that if you want to purchase this calendar, you can. But it's on the 17th of September. Actually, it starts the day before. Because, you know, a Hebrew day, you actually start in the evening of the 16th. So the evening of the 16th on Shabbat, the evening of Shabbat. And then... Yom Teruah is 
the first day of the week, Yom Akkad, or the 17th of this month. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to end now so that people can leave that need to go to work or need to go to sleep. But I'll stay a little bit longer after we end. And that way if people have questions about the calendar, we can talk about it. And I'll go more in depth into why I'm not going with the current Ashkenazi calendar. And I'm open. It's for discussion. It's not like my way is the only way. I'm not dogmatic about anything because I'm learning. I'm learning about this stuff almost every day. I'm researching, trying to figure these things out. But let's end first in prayer. And then those that need to go can go. And I'll stay just a little bit longer. So if anyone wants to still discuss this, we can. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. You have truly shown us mercy. You have truly shown us grace and favor because you are preparing us for this day so that we can be with you. We can be one of those that goes with you to Mount Zion so we can meet you in the clouds, Father. We praise you. We give you glory. We thank you, Father, for not leaving us ignorant. You have spelled out in so many places in your word about this day, about Yom Teruah, the day of the trumpet blast, the, the day, the hidden day, the day, Father, where you're going to come back and the resurrection is going to occur. So I ask that you teach us how to properly keep this day. Teach us how to honor you. Teach us how to meet you. We want to get, get right with all your appointed times. Many of us, many of us have been lacking keeping your appointed times for most of our lives, including myself. So I'm asking that you teach us, reveal to us the truth, because we want to walk in the truth according to your spirit, not just doing things because other, other people are doing them, because of, of your leading by your spirit and according to your word. So we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Yahushua's name, we pray. Amen. Last thing I want to say, on Yom Teruah, the, the, the only commandment thus far that I've seen on this day we are, it's a Sabbath day. So that means you rest. You don't do your work like for your job or anything, which makes it kind of easy with this calendar because it's on the weekend, which is great. Uh, secondly, you are some, it's a, it's a holy convocation. So what I'm planning to do for those that want to join, I'm going to, uh, actually do a, uh, what you call it a service. An online service for those of you that don't have a place to attend. But I encourage you, if you do have a place to attend where people are getting together, go ahead and do it. Um, even the people that are here in Texas, like I'm going to invite my friends so we can do it together, even though I'm doing it online. So we can be a part, meet, meeting with y'all together. So my my goal is to do that um, um, let me think on the beginning of Shabbat so so I, I don't typically say it but I'm gonna say it now just for understanding Friday night <laughs> Friday night I'm going to uh, do do a service where we can bring in Yom Tura because that's when it starts Friday night in the evening, and I'll I'll have a uh, the exact time I'll send it tomorrow in text for those of you that would like to attend. Um, I just would ma I miss being in Seattle because we would we would celebrate these things together, but we'll do what we can now. Okay. But that's that's it. On the seventeenth, are we not we're supposed to treat that as a Sabbath too? On Yom Torah, we're supposed to treat that as a Sabbath and not work. Yes. Yeah, so the on Yom Teruah is a uh, is what you call a high Sabbath. Yes. Okay, because I need to call up. 
Hey, also, hey, also, also can you explain the day? Because the big numbers is that the pagan day, and then the parentheses is the Hebrew day, or is it the other way around? It's the other way around. First, first thing I want to do before I explain anything, I'm going to put this link in the chat. So if you want to access to that calendar, you can go to her site, uh, Rachel's. It's, it's, this is like 80 pages of just notes about why this calendar is the way it is. It's a lot to digest. But yes, now going back, the big number is the Hebrew day. The small number is our Gregorian calendar. So see how it says September, October, 2022 oh i got the wrong calendar up my bad i have both of them i have the 2022 and i have the 2023 and i must have i was where there was a misprint then remember we talked about it yeah but oh yeah right because this one says 2023 okay yeah you're right i think she misprinted this one you're right i forgot but but i have two of them so and they both look the same so i just was making sure so yeah the first day is the uh hebrew day and then the second day this is september 17th so let me go back though the previous month because on the previous month the 16th is um Shabbat and on the eve of Shabbat is when it's that's when it starts I'm sorry the is it the eve of Shabbat no the eve of Teru. yeah I'm sorry yeah the eve of um Yom Akkad which is Sunday the eve of that day is right the first day of Yom Teruah uh like if we're looking at it on our calendar but it it starts it starts like at the end of Shabbat. So just like we start a day typically, like we start the Sabbath at sun sun sundown. So from sun sunset to sunset, that's how this works. But this is also a fast day. Notice how it says fast. Mm -hmm. So let me give you. I'm going to go on to that scripture real quick for those that want to know about the fast days, fast month. Zechariah chapter 8. I used to always wonder what these days are. When I started first started coming into the Sabbath, it says, Thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, or Yahuwah Savaot, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness, and cheerful feasts, therefore love the truth and peace. What this is saying, one day, these, day, these days are fast days right now for Israel. Most of Israel doesn't know about them. But these are fast days, and one day, these fast days are no longer going to be fast days. They're going to be days of joy and gladness. Yah is going to turn for, for, the, for the house of Judah. Thank Yah. No longer are we going to have to fast anymore, but we're going to have feasts. We're going to be celebrating. So I didn't fully come into this understanding of the fast days until I understood the calendar. Then it all started to make sense. So the fast of the fourth month, the fast, the, so how this works, I'm going to draw it out real quick. I'm going to draw it. Uh, let me go to pages. Let me create a new one. So how this, how this works, um, there's 12 months in the Hebrew calendar. Just like our calendar but within each one of these months um 
You have 30 days. So let, I'm just going to make four of these or six of these things. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I got seven. That's fine. So the first, this is um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in the first month, there is 30 days. Let's, let's do that. 30 days. In the second month, there's 30 days. In the third month, there's 31 days. In the sixth month, there's 31 days. Fourth month, there's 30. Fifth month, there's 30. Seventh month, there's 30 days. I might have, do I have this backward? No, this is right. This is right. So, and it, it goes like this in this pattern all the way to the 12th month. So if you go all the way to 12, 12, month 12, you'll have four days that are 31 month days, and you'll have eight days that are 30 length of 30. Now, on going from the third month to the fourth month, say you're say we're say we were at uh day 29 day 30 and then day 31 this day right here day 31 is what's known um as a transition day You, you get to the end of the month and then a new transition. But you notice they only happen on the third month and the sixth month. So the third month is in the springtime. I'm sorry, the first month is in the springtime. That's where we have the beginning of, the, of Abib, which is the vernal equinox, spring equinox. The time, it, there's equinox and there's equal lux. And so when you have a equal lux basically the light and the darkness is 12 hours around the whole earth equinox is when i'm sorry equal lux is when it's, it stands for eco light equal lux eco light so when the earth has 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness exactly that's the start of spring on these days, they're transition days. And so once you get, I didn't, I didn't write the whole thing, but once you get to the 12th month, there's a transition day going to the first month, which would be the 31st day. These transition days, the 31st days are fast days. According to the book of Enoch and the book of Jubilees. The first day of the month, is an appointed time because it's it's yom kadosh it's it, it's kadosh it's the day it's the head of the month the beginning of the month and israel is to celebrate the beginning of every month so but when you have a transition day which is always the 31st day which is always going to be on the third month the sixth month the reason this is also a reason why i believe the most high was saying we need to fast we're supposed to fast the day before the day of Yah. All the fasting we just read about in the scriptures, I didn't even realize that till he asked me the question today. Caleb asked me about the calendar question today. We're actually supposed to be fasting on that day. So that's the feast of the seventh month that Zechariah is talking about. The fast of the seventh month. And then the fast of the tenth month is, if if I if I just let me just do them just so we can see it for sure. So right here, I do eight, nine, ten. So even though the the fast is happening in in the sixth month, it's really like 
in between the sixth and the seventh. So they call it the fast of the seventh month. So even it's like the at the end of the sixth month going to month seven. So they call it the fast of the seventh month. So this, you 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 just keep seeing this pattern, and this is what this means, the, the feast of the tenth. Now, you'll you also notice another verse or another fast in here too, the fast of the fifth month. The fast of the fifth month, that's kind of out of place, it seems like. Because that doesn't go with our pattern. The fast of the fifth month is the fifth month of the Hebrew calendar. And if you know anything about our history on the Hebrew calendar, a lot of devastation happened in our history. One of those things, the ninth of Av. The ninth of Av, that's the way you say the fifth month according to the Hebrew on the Babylonian Hebrew name for the fifth month. That day is when the temple was destroyed twice. Many other things besides the temple being destroyed that were of monumental proportions in Israel's history have also happened on the fifth month. So this month has become a month of fasting. Or I should say that, that, that not the whole month, but the day or maybe days within the month, especially the ninth of Av. Because it's a day where you remember the tragedy of what the Israelites losing the temple, which meaning Yah's presence was no longer with them because of their sin, because of their rebellion. They were, you know, they went into captivity. So there's also a fast on this month. I'm not sure if that is the only reason, but I know that is one of the main reasons of the fast. So now it, is, it didn't mention the fast of the first month. Because there's also a fast of the first month as well. But just to let you know, there's biblical precedence for this in the 66 books. But then when you read the other books, it becomes even more clear. So that's why I want to explain about the fast thing. Um, now, I, is there... I know there's probably a million questions <laughs> and I don't even know where to start, but if you have any questions, I can try to answer them first, especially about this calendar. Um, Cause I've, I, did you answer my question? I thought I did. What was your question? What confuses me is the numbers that she has on the chart. So the big number represents what? The one in the parentheses represents something. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I answered it. Remember I said it's the number that's in parentheses is the pagan calendar, our regular calendar. And the big number is the Hebrew date. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got it now. So this number right here is tied to September. But once you get to one, this is the first day here. But this should be 2023. I think she made a typo here. You know what would make for interesting research? Uh, as you mentioned, both temples destroyed on the same day. I'm wondering if places like Tulsa, Oklahoma and Rosewood and Lake Lanier occurred on the same day in their respective years as well. That's that's interesting to look at. I think because on that fifth day, on that fifth month, I, I mean, many 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 uh things like if we go through a list i don't have it prepared but i've i've gone through at times going through like list of major events in the scriptures and events that aren't in the scriptures that have happened on the on the 
fifth month. So the awesome thing about that, though, is that Yah says he's going to turn those days into days of rejoicing. So they, they're not going to always be times of mourning, times of fasting. They're going to be times of feasting. Um, also, just a note, remember last week we talked about, not last week, but the week before last week, uh, we talked about, no, that, that was last week. We were looking at the number of days in the year. Remember, it's 364 days. So this is based on a 364-day uh, calendar. So um, one thing that's nice, too, is that when you have a 364-day calendar, let me just break out the calculator, everything is fixed, which the scripture says it's supposed to be fixed. So like the 364, it divides evenly by 7 into 52, and it divides evenly by 4. For the four seasons so you have not so you have 91 days in each season or you could say you have 90 days in each season and one transition day so like when we were looking at um the slide that i just made uh here um from here to here is 90 days but then you have plus one transition day and then you have the same thing here 90 days plus one so it divides e evenly to 91 so there's no guessing when an appointed time is going to occur because it's the same day every year it's it's, I mean, on the same day of the week every year. It doesn't change because it's fixed. Whereas if you have 365 days, then now on our calendar, it's, a, it's such a struggle for us because we use the Gregorian calendar and it has 365 days. So the, the appointed times change every year. Sometimes it'll be on the first day of the week. Sometimes it'll be on the second day of the week. Sometimes it'll be on the fourth day of the week, like Passover, like Passover. Or, or whatever. Whatever. And and because we're because so we're so um, used to our pagan calendar, it makes it difficult. So that's why I'm trying to do do things as much Hebrew as possible. And I like the fact that. She has the days of the week here in Hebrew. So Yom Akkad, Yom Shini, Shini uh, Yom Salisi, Yom uh, Rebi, Yom Hamisi, you know, so we can get back to our roots. Go ahead if you had your hand up. Your hand up. Yeah. Um, the other thing, I mean, there's so many years that passed already that with the Gregorian calendar being 365 and then adding the leap year, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, on the second month of the Gregorian calendar, which messed it all up. Are you saying that there is actually a Hebrew calendar existing to where it all, it has always been 364? Does that exist? No, but I'm going to make one tomorrow. But how, if you create one, for example, mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on current uh, date, don't you need to go back at a certain point to where how many times, how many years has been passed that it's, it was 365 or 366? I'm, so, I'm glad so glad you brought that up because I asked it, I actually, um, saved a reference that I think is right here, if I'm not mistaken. 
about the times that the calendar was changed. And um, okay, yeah, I think this is it. Thank you, Father, for helping me find this so fast. Let me, I'll read this with you. So it's, it's talking about Julian and Gregorian. The Gregorian calendar is what we use today, but the Gregorian is based on the Julian calendar. So they're both the same, but the Gregorian has little difference. So let's read it. The Julian calendar was the system. The Julian calendar was the system of dating followed from 46 BC onwards. Now, if you remember, we were reading about Antiochus, Epiphanes, uh, not that long ago. And following Antiochus Epiphanes, who changed times and seasons, the kings following him, the Greek kings following him, and then later on the Roman Caesars, they they changed the, the the calendars and forced Israel and basically the known part that known part of the world anyone that was under the control to abide under that calendar. So so the dating followed for 46 BC onwards. It was this calendar which added one entire day in every four years, giving us our leap year, because it had. It had been calculated that the earth takes 365 and a quarter days to complete its circuit around the sun, not a straight 365 days. Now, something off here, and I'm going to have my son make me an animation to show you all this. I can't wait to do that, use his skills. I'm going to show actually what the sun is really doing what the earth is really doing because this goes against the bible the earth is not rotating around the sun the sun is moving around the earth in the firmament by the way things like this like uh, making assumptions that the earth is rotating at 365 and a quarter days is i believe maybe in part what caused them to think like this because there is something that th that takes 365 and a quarter days but it's not it's not the earth rotating it's the rotation of the stars the rotation of the stars in reference to the earth is 365 and a quarter days so last week, I think last week, we talked about the sidereal or sidereal day. And when you look at the sidereal day, the sidereal day is, is a, using sidereal time or sidereal, I still don't know how you pronounce this, how you pronounce this. In the celestial coordinate system, it is easy to locate the position of celestial objects in the night sky. Sidereal or side real time is a time scale that is based on Earth's rate of rotation measured relative to fixed stars. So the, this, this way of calculating time is what we use today. They say the Earth's rotation is not exactly, to, oh, this is a great slide right here. The Earth's rotation is not exactly 24 hours, even though they tell us it is. It's really 23 hours and 56 minutes. That's not a full rotation. So because that's not a full rotation, according to them, we need a whole extra day. And then every now and then we need a leap year because it's not really a whole extra day. It's only a fourth of an extra day. And so with that, we get 365 days and completely knocking us off of Yah's calendar. Go ahead, so Caleb. So you take that extra day every four years and multiply it times the number i guess it'd be the number of years 
I'm not sure. I guess I'm not sure if you have divided by four since the time that King changed the times, which would be, I'm not exactly sure when it was. Was it 2,000 years ago or was it in BC? Oh, I'm about to read it. I, I haven't even gotten into the crutch of the article yet. He, he They break it down in this article. I, okay. I don't remember. I have to read it, though. But yeah, you're right. You can do the calculations all the way up to that date. Now, were things done before that date that could have thrown them off? I don't know, because they were in the using the Babylonian calendar for a while. I mean, we got the Babylonian Hebrew months. So who knows? But we can do the best that we can with what we got. And we see, let's let me go back. Julian calendar. So unfortunately, this calculation was not entirely act. Actually, let me stop. Does that make sense? What I talked about this side of real thing? Because this was confused, confusing as a mug to me when I first saw this. I said, "What? I does this make sense?" Yah says a day is twenty. Is a day is uh from the time sunset to to sunset, which is twenty four hours exactly. That's called a solar day. That's the traditional view as well. That's the traditional all throughout history. From sunset to sunset is 24 hours. Now, scientists are who are wiser than Elohim, they say, come up with this. Oh, no, we're rotating around something. And it takes us 23 hours exactly, 23 hours, 56 minutes. If, if it doesn't make sense, raise your hand. But let me, I'll keep going. So it says, unfortunately, this calculation was not entirely accurate. So even what they got, this 365 and a quarter days, is still not accurate. In fact, the sun circuit is not exactly 365 and a quarter days. It's approximately 11 minutes less. This may seem a very small amount, but over a large number of years, this figure builds up. As a result, it emerged that the Julian calendar was overcorrecting by around eight days each millennium. In the 16th century, the problem was examined. A solution was hit upon whereby centenary years would not be leap years unless they were divisible by that perfect number, four, 400. This meant that three out of four century year, centenary, centenary years would not be leap years or that in every 400 years, there would not be 100 leap years, but 97. So using this calculation meant that there would only be an overcorrection of 23 seconds, and it would take 3,700 years before the overcorrection amounted to a full day. So this is what happened. They realized, even though they have made their calendar more in sync with what really happens, it's still off. So it, it was off by eight days every a thousand years. So going from the time of 46 BC all the way to the time of the 15th century, where the Gregorian calendar was created by the Catholic Church, you know, that time added up to, I think it was 11 days. We'll read it. So, so now we have the Gregorian calendar to kind of fix that and I'm sorry, they, they added the leap year to fix that. Then it says in 1582, there we have the beast coming in again. Pope Gregory ruled that this new calendar, thereafter called the Gregorian calendar, should be brought into use. By that stage, the Julian calendar had added 10 days too many to the calendar. So Pope Gregory decreed that the day after the 4th of October, 1582, should be the 15th of October 1582, thus correcting the error. So I want to show you something. I, I wanted to verify this. I went to timeanddate.com and I looked at the year 1752. 1752. Look, everything is normal until you get to my birthday month. 1 2 14. 
they took 11 days out of the calendar because that's how out, out of sync it was. And Jubilees, Enoch, they tell us over and over again, if you don't keep my days, you're going to be, th these days are going to be dislodged and out of order. You'll never find the feast days. And you'll be disobedient of the commandments. You'll never know what day to do this. So even the pagans, 1700 is not that far away. They had to take 11 days out because their stuff ain't right. Go ahead, uh, Caleb. So basically, the days we think are Shabbat could be the second or third day or something like that. Well, that's something that I'm trying to figure out. That's that is I have a couple questions. That's one of my questions. But after meditating on this, at least this particular issue, because this ain't the only issue, but at least for this issue, I don't think that's a problem. Because notice the days of the week stay the same. Like there, I mean, I mean, not the number, but they still call this the first day of the week, the second day of the week. It's just that the numbers within that month changed. So they still considered this day the seventh day. Okay. So at least for this issue, that's not a problem. But in terms of other issues that may have happened throughout history, I'm still not sure about that. But let me keep reading. It says, unfortunately, the his for historians, the new calendar was not adopted universally. Different countries begin to follow it at different dates. The main dates of the introduction are as follows. So all the nations, all the, what it's saying, all the nations did not go along with, with Pope Gregory's calendar initially. They took time. Of course, Italy did, because that's where the Vatican's at. France, Spain, all these European nations are going to be the first ones to do it. And they're the ones that all came out of Rome. Some nations didn't do it to the 1700s. They had 1587, but then 1700s, they began to adopt the Gregorian calendar. This is what it's talking about. And then we get America, 1752. So even America wasn't using this calendar given to us by the Pope at this point. It's starting to show you who's in power, though, who has the real authority. As we've been studying Edom, and we ain't nowhere near a finish with that. I just had to take a break because it's feast days. But you start to see if all of these nations, they're all using the calendar given to us by this man. Anyways, China. China took a long time. Japan took about another hundred years after America. And then China took 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 a another like 80 some years or whatever before they adopted why they they are I, I mean in my opinion because they don't want nothing to do with the western system but eventually as you see the world as it began begins to increasingly use this calendar you don't have a choice because how are you going to do business how are you going to do trade one one people says i'm going to be here on the fourth but for you it's the 15th because you never change your calendar so it's just hard to do business if everybody's not on this same calendar that goes against yah's way of doing it so you can kind of see oh my goodness 1923 greece why wow, they really held out for a long time i was just about to say like Western countries now, when like when countries are, are, are in need or getting assistance from some of these other bigger countries or more richer countries, or when they're making these treaties, they'll throw stuff in like this, that if you want something from us, you got to conform just to certain things like this or our rules or just yeah. like America when they went to Africa or I forget what country it was, Nigeria or some other countries, but told them if they wanted assistance, they had to let let go of the 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 uh 
the laws they had concerning homosexuality, you know. Yep. And some of those African countries said, no, we're not going to do that. And basically, that's why they started doing business with China. Because China don't care about none of that. Yeah. Or business with Russia. And so now you see Russia, and, or mostly China, and Russia too, building up their infrastructure, whereas America used to be big in that. And that's part of that thing going on with the country of Niger, with France, you know. Yep. Exactly. They they forced these treaties and and then they also um if you don't do business with them, they'll cause a coup to happen in your nation. You know, the, what they did like in Libya with Gaddafi. Gaddafi, you know what Gaddafi was about to do? He was about to create a gold based backed currency in Africa for Libya. When he start publicizing that all of a sudden he's the boogeyman and they took him out they're like nope we want you using our u.s dollars you're going to use our system you, you're going to align with us or we'll kill you okay and i just want to show you a couple more things here it says in great britain the new calendar was adopted in 1752 in order to deal with the discrepancy of days which by now had grown to 11. It was ordered that the 2nd of September, 1752 would be immediately followed by the 14th. Oh, they just want to skip my birthday. September, 1752. This led to crowds of people on the streets demanding, give us back our 11 days. It also explains why our financial year begins on the 6th of April. The official start of the year used to be uh, Lady Day which is the 25th of March. But the loss of 11 days in 1752 pushed us back to the 5th of April. Another skip day in 1800 pushed it back again to 6th of April. Um, I'm not going to read all this part, but I'll just tell you what it's saying. It was saying, basically, I'll put this in the track chat so y'all can read it if you want. But it's basically saying that... Uh, different nations it was showing the different issues that different nations had with each other like for example one person could mail something to another nation like write a letter and on that letter it would be dated this is march 1st but when the person gets the letter it's still february because they hadn't changed their calendar yet so you know, it's just that's kind of what it's talking about. It's giving examples of that, showing historical documents where people signed off on a date that's earlier than the uh, date than it, that it was sent. And you're like, how is that possible? So this is how you do the calculation. It actually tells you right here. So this following table will assist in making conversions from the Julian to Gregorian calendars. But I'll let y'all look at that later. But this is just my when you're talking when g asked the question about the 364 days and how did it get off and how do you reconcile you basically got to do your, your your homework in the history you have to look at what nation what what uh calendars the nations were using at a given period of time and that's not an easy job to do but uh one one thing one there's one there's one nation that we do know that was keeping the 364 day calendar though that is ethiopia ethiopia has same calendar that we're basing this calendar off of so ethiopian calendar uh is this it Okay, this is an article about it. A 364-day calendar encapsulated in the liturgy of the seventh Sabbath of Beta Israel. So Beta Israel is the group, uh, it's, it's one of the Israelite tribes in Ethiopia. 
they have been keeping the, sh the Shabbats. They have been keeping the feast days. They have been honoring the Torah uh, for millennia. And they know they're Israel. Israel in the 60s decided to include them as citizens of Israel because they can prove that they're, in fact, in fact, the Ashkenazi went to Ethiopia to learn from them various aspects because, you know, they want to build this temple again. So they needed to, le to learn some things practically. How do you perform a sacrifice? When you, when you do this, the scripture says this, but when it's time to actually do this, the, the Jewish people are like, but we want to do it, you know, exactly the way we're supposed to do. So let's go to Ethiopia and ask them. Why? Because they still sacrifice. Like they still kill a lamb on Passover every Passover. They still, you know, whether that's right or wrong, it just shows you how they have maintained their traditions since they were scattered from the land. Or I should say since, since I don't want to say since they were scattered from the land. I just say since. Yeah, I guess since the scattering of the land, because I believe parts of the Ethiopia actually may be part of Israel, because this was in that uh, Nile River border. But anyway, let's that this is a example of a nation within the modern nation of Ethiopia who still use this calendar, and the and we know they use this calendar. Uh, and they were able to use this calendar because they had um, the Book of Enoch. So the Ethiopian Bible has the Book of Enoch in it. So if you look up Ethiopian Bible, it has it has Enoch. It has second Enoch, third Enoch. It has also the Book of Jubilees, although their their Book of Jubilees, from what I hear, is is different than what we have. There's some big differences, but it's still the Book of Jubilees. Um, and and as I've mentioned many times, all the books that are in the Book of Enoch were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls which is the greatest finding ever in terms of biblical manuscripts. So I'd like to show, I'll, I'll show you, now nah, I'm not going to show all the books in the Book of Enoch, but it's a lot. It's a lot of books. So they've been maintaining the scriptures, they've main, been maintaining the traditions, and they still keep the 364-day calendar. There's other things that I'll go into that are even more fascinating, which may point you to where the promised land is that go hand in hand with that. But I'll save that for when we have a deep dive into the calendar, because this ain't a deep dive. I'm just trying to answer questions. Um, anything else? I got to go, fam. I got to get up. All right. That's understandable. Anybody got to go, they can go. I understand. Love y'all, Mishpacha. Be safe. Shalom. Love you too. All right. If we don't have no more questions, then we can uh, end this. Where can you find the Ethiopian um, calendar? So... The Ethiopian calendar is based on Enoch. So if you're following the 364-day calendar, you are following it in a sense. The only difference is they may start the day on a different day. I don't know. I, actually, no. I take that back. Rachel, who, who did this calendar... She actually said she's doing it according to the Enochian calendar. So, or I'm sorry, the uh, Ethiopian. 
Ethiopian. In fact, I think if you go to the beginning of this. Yeah, one, where one, did she find it? That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, oh that, that, that. You have to do you something. Have to do something. Really. I, I, I looked at look some, at uh, some uh, like that like article, that article up, 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 right here. Right here. If you study if you the study beta, the beta Israel, Israel, look at, look at how they how keep they the keep their um, um it may explain. it may explain can you put that in the search i mean in the messages too chat the chat Gosh. yeah yeah i have not i have not vetted this vetted yet. this yet so i put so it i put chat, it in the chat but i'm not i'm not endorsing endorsing anything, anything. But, but my, but point, my is, point is, I don't know, I don't know what you use, use, but what you, but what you have, you have to do is, 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 uh, do some research, some research, research, research on that Ethiopian, on that Ethiopian and, and, and see how, it see was how out. it was up. But, um, but, um, that's, 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 in, part that's in part why I'm, why I'm not dogmatic. dogmatic. This is like, my thing is, what what is, why can't you just make the calendar, the Hebrew calendar, and then go off of it? Because you don't even know if. Yeah, but I'm saying happening. based off of what we have right now, it's based still, off of what we know right I, now. I feel like it's still like messed up unless you went from mm -hmm. when they started messing it up. Yes, Honestly. yes, I, I, I agree. I agree with you. With you. You you you, need, you need to be like a burrito. Be like a burrito. Do, you, do you mind? Do you mind? Uh, we're so far away from. The you have to. You uh, have to. Uh, basically, basically, test everything. Test every because I I I love I love Rachel. She she has expanded my understanding. The first person to explain this in a way that I could understand it but i can't just take what she says i because she could she she has gotten us closer i believe if not all the way there but she could be wrong so i'm i'm vetting because i was actually when i first learned about this this 364 day i i was listening to different teachers and i wasn't following it necessarily but i was starting to understand that we're off and they're and then when you listen to their explanations it sounds everything sounds like the truth they explain it in a way that just like rachel i mean even maybe better than her but the more i de dig into what they're saying i'm just saying it doesn't align with scripture we give you an example most people start that that most people that know about this calendar start the first day of the year on the fourth day because he created the sun and the moon and the stars on the fourth day and so the sun is to rule the day right so you, there's no the the way of thinking is that on earth we really we don't have a day our day really starts when the sun rises and sets so even though yah has a day that he started he did say let there be light their their line of thinking is well since the sun you know blah blah, blah and they have great reasons to support all that um we're going to start our calendar in the middle of the week on the fourth day and so i was thoroughly convinced of that for a long time until i started thinking about it and more deeply and doing my own study i was like well if that's the case then that means we're not in alignment with Yah and the angels. If we start our calendar the first day on the fourth day, then when they keep Sabbath, we're not really keeping Sabbath with them. And that goes against the scripture. And Jubilee says it explicitly. Jubilee says that when Noah was keeping uh, Shavuot, the angels in heaven were had been keeping Shavuot pre on that same day, you know, so that 
completely switched me around. Okay, no, the first day is the first day. I know the sun wasn't around, but the first day is the first day, which also gets you asking deeper questions like, so the the uh, light that comes from the sun is not necessary because there's a greater light. That light has been hidden, but it will be returning. And when it returns, there won't be a need for the sun, the light of the sun anymore or from the moon. I'm not saying it won't be here, but it won't be needed because his light is going to make that light ashamed. I believe it's Isaiah that says that the moon and the sun are going to be shamed, ashamed because of the glory that comes from him. So. You don't need that light for a day. The eternal week. Anyway, I'm just giving you an example of why I just can't take Rachel's what she's saying. But I do appreciate the research she's do doing because it's helping me. It's giving me a starting point to do my own. But I'm definitely, I didn't explain this. I wish I had to explain this before people left. I'm definitely not going to just go with the Ashkenazi because the Ashkenazi are going off the moon every every month every new month starts with the new moon now according to enoch and jubilees and the priestly books a day is what i told you 364 days and a month can only be 30 days or in some cases 31 days if it's if you go off the moon, the, the cycle of the moon is 29 and a half days. So some days, that's why you have some days are 29 days. Some days are 30 days. Some days are 31 days. Because the cycle of the moon, if you go by the cycle of the moon, you're really going to get off. And just like they do now, the days, the appointed times, they change. Well, the, the the Passover is not always on the first day of the week. It's the first day on the Hebrew calendar, per se, like on, on their version of the Hebrew calendar. But if you have seven days and you have a 364 day year, it should always happen on the same day of the week. Always, even if the Gregorian calendar and it's mismatched. It should always, but there doesn't because they use the cycle of the moon and therefore they have to add a 13th month, which is like not a leap year, but they add a leap month because they're off. And as we read, Jubilees clearly tells us we're going to get off. If you don't do this right, you're going to get off. And so now we got to add leap years and leap months. And for them, it shouldn't really matter because they are keeping... They're supposed to be keeping the Hebrew calendar, right? Israel, in the state of Israel, that's supposed to be Yah's way of doing it. But it's mixed with the ways of the Gentiles. So therefore, they get off too. But now I still got questions about this calendar, to even the 364 day. I still got some questions. But my, every the dots are starting to connect and the light bulb is starting to go off but the part that i wanted to explain i'm sorry if it's late but y'all still here so i guess it's fine so the moon the kadesh that's when you when you see new moon in the king james it really should be translated the the beginning of the month or the head of the month not moon not new moon because it's not the word for moon the word for moon is yariat which she goes into detail on this uh calendar and then when you look at the um when you look at the the meanings of the moon in hebrew like and what it sounds like I love the example she gave here. Let's see, where's it at? Yeriak is Hebrew for moon, but in Yeri, I'm not saying, I don't know if I'm saying it exactly right. Iriak 
I think Uriok starts with a Yod. It sounds like you, uh, your Yurak or Yurk, which is where we get like York from. It also also sounds like Iraq, Iraq, Yurk, and it sounds like also the word for Babylon, which sounds the same, Iraq. I forgot where she put that in here, but anyway, we're not supposed to use the moon. Um, but that's, Yo, that's, if you go up like three, you passed it. I saw it's, it's all in black. Go up one more. See, oh, moon, you're rock. I saw this, but I, I, I like just read right. All I saw was bell. I didn't see this part. You're rock. Uh, so you're rock, moth, moon. But this is not what I'm looking for either. I'm looking for. Uh, this is good though because it helps me spell it. So let me search for it with the right spelling. Nah, that's that's not it. But that's okay. I can. I'll do it later when we study. Study that uh, word. So when when we do when we do our study of the calendar, we're going to go through Enoch. We're going to go through Jubilees, and we'll map out the rotation of the sun. The sun has a specific fixed uh, cycle. The moon has a specific fixed cycle. It goes through six portals. It enters through six portals and it exits through six portals on the other side. So it's rising on the east. The east has six portals and the west has six portals. And around each of those portals, it comes out of one portal every month. So in one month, it'll come out one portal and the other month, it'll come out another portal and around all those portals are little windows, which give the heat. Um, and the stars also come out of these windows and the moon comes out the same portals as the sun. So, I mean, all of that is very interesting, kind of confusing if you, you know, the first time you read it, but I'm, I'm now starting to understand it. So we'll go into all that next time. Not next week, but next time we talk about it. Okay, that's all I got for today, for tonight. So if there's no, no more questions, have a good night, everybody. Lelato, shalom. Lelato. Yeah, love you guys. Again, happy Bye. birthday, Bye. Joel. Bye. Bye, Joe. Bye. 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 Happy Bye. birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.